Hey everyone, this is Eric Vasquez from Justice for Youth, and I'm really passionate about mentoring gang-affiliated youth. Um, Matthew 28, 19 says that we are to go and make disciples of all nations. And I take that literally, and I believe that it's our mission, uh, being the church, to go and make disciples of all neighborhoods. Uh, I think we are to be strong and courageous and not be afraid to walk into these spaces and enter into relationship with these students who are often profiled and uh, people are often fearful of, of building with. Uh, but it's really our responsibility to serve and love these kinds of young people well. Uh, one of the things that has really helped me in the past 15 years as I've done this uh, very effectively, I believe, is really learning to um, know their stories really well, you know, uh, not being afraid to spark conversation and then to go deep uh, as that young person allows and permits. Asking questions open-ended so that you can really get to know them deeply. Um, and then you build that rapport and trust, which is so important to gang-affiliated teens. If they don't feel like they can trust you, you're not going to be able to have a relationship with that person. Uh, following up well with that student is so important. You know, they, they will often have a high level of transience. They'll be in school one day and gone the next for a few months. And you want to stay connected because they're that important to us. So you have to leverage social media. You have to show up in their neighborhood. You have to find them bouncing from campus to campus and follow them passionately with a pursuing heart, just as Jesus does with us. Um, and I think with that consistency, uh, it makes the difference to these young people. Uh, most people in these young people's lives are in and out. And they're inconsistent. And they're often thrown the towel in on and forgotten. But we represent that consistent love and presence in their lives. Um, knowing their stories, following up well, I think it's very important to also be able to connect their heart to Jesus. Uh, oftentimes there's this misconception that in mentoring gang-affiliated youth, you have to mentor the entire gang or gangs. And that's not true. It's really you and that young person. Um, building spaces outside of the gang in their neighborhood to form and find their identity apart from that is so important. And in those spaces that you create, there must be an element of allure. Uh, that brings them and draws them out from their normal and comfortable space. You'll find with gang-affiliated youth that they will usually stay in an area and not be uprooted or go outside of a small quadrant. Um, so it's important for us to do that. And when we get them in those spaces, having structured, meaningful conversations, uh, guiding that discipling and mentoring relationship is so important. Uh, we can't shoot from the hip. You know, they sniff that out so quickly and they know a, a, a wankster, you know, somebody who's faking the funk and they don't respect that. You know, it's important that you know what you're talking about. You have a plan and you're, you have the ability to carry that out with them. And you're going to be able to grind through them through seasons of success and seasons of failures. There's this one student, his name is Juanito. Um, we got close pretty quickly, and I mentored his older brother. Uh, they're from a gang on the west side of our, of our uh, city. And at some point, we had a bump in the road. Uh, we got into an argument verbally, and I was holding him accountable, and I challenged him. He did not like that, and he disconnected from me. Uh, I stayed consistent and persistent. Even when I would get no response, I would message him and call. Uh, I would show up asking to speak to him, he refused several times, uh, but as I continued to try and rebuild and reconcile, there was a moment where we were able to have a conversation with one another, and God was at the center of that. I humbled myself and was able to ask for His forgiveness, and He offered that to me, and He respected my humility and my willingness to rebuild with Him. Since then, uh, I've seen Juanito be able to renounce the gang lifestyle, He's been able to come back to school. He's getting A's and B's, and he was once an F student. And now he's starting very fresh, new decision to not only come back to our organization and begin to peer mentor and be mentored by other healthy surrogates and adults, but he's also starting to come back to church with me. 
And I've seen him get serious about his relationship with God and ask big questions. And we've been able to have a healthy relationship with one another. And I know it's going to be through my relationship with him that he's going to find Jesus. And through my love and consistency in his life, he's going to see how his Father in heaven loves him and will never leave him nor fail him. So one myth and stereotype that I have found to be true in mentoring gang-affiliated teens is you, some people often feel that there's an element of crazy risk and your life's in danger and you're not going to be safe. And, you know, I want to address that and share that, you know, there are some real risks, but that are, those things can only happen when you don't walk into these relationships with a hum, humble posture. Somebody who's uh, a learner and observer of the culture, somebody who's willing to come in and respect some of the things that you know, they go through and be, being able to sit and listen and being a student and somebody that can express some genuine concern and care um, for these students, that's so important. One thing that helps kind of dispel this fear is if you really make a commitment to early intervention. Uh, one thing that has helped me be successful in mentoring gang-affiliated teens is when I get onto campuses early and often um, I will meet them sometimes when they're 10, 11, 12 years old, and they're just a kid, and they haven't yet totally been tainted by the neighborhood and its woes. Uh, they haven't been sucked in fully because they have not come of age, and I build relationship then. And as they grow, uh, as I stay in touch with them, and you see them later at 15, 16, 17 years old, uh, sometimes they have fully devoted themselves to these lifestyles, but you're able to still walk in and with a level of respect, um, you know, you can break through some of these walls very easily because you have a long-term relationship. And they long for that. That's something that we need to do is in creating some of these spaces where you're building relationships with these gang-affiliated teens, they need a new space to belong. The gang offers... Uh, a nest for them uh, where they form identity and they feel like they belong. They have a sense of family. And we have to do the same thing as youth workers. We have to create the same spaces where they feel like they belong and they can find their identity in new spaces and new places. I pray that some of these uh, tools and encouragements will help you. Uh, I've been really encouraged over the years as I've seen many of these young lives transformed and changed. And it's a work of the heart and I have great hope for the future of these young lives. And you will play a vital role uh, in their development, in their relationship with Christ. You will be and, and you will make the difference through your relationship and commitment to them. God bless you.